A century ago, Grover Cleveland was the 22nd president of the United States, and the Statue of Liberty was dedicated in New York Harbor. 900 miles south in Atlanta, Georgia, an obscure pharmacist, John Pemberton, concocted a soft drink syrup in an iron kettle. He put it in jugs and sold it to Jacob's Pharmacy, where it was mixed with carbonated water at the soda fountain and served to customers across the store's marble counter. The drink was named Coca-Cola. Although businesses were growing and manufacturing processes becoming more refined, the production and marketing of carbonated soft drinks remained relatively primitive. Pemberton's drink was to change this, although the sales results in 1886 came to only $50, while advertising expenses were $73.96. In 1888, Pemberton sold his interest in the product to an Atlanta wholesale druggist, Asa Candler, for $550. In three years, Candler had acquired the total rights to Coca-Cola for an additional $1,800. He sold his other interests in order to devote all his efforts to the product and registered the trademark Coca-Cola. By 1897, Coca-Cola, while still sold only at soda fountains, had established branch operations in Dallas, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Philadelphia to better serve its customers nationwide. In 1898, the first building constructed specifically to house the headquarters of the Coca-Cola Company was completed, and the following year, an event took place that would profoundly influence the growth of Coca-Cola. Two gentlemen from Chattanooga, Tennessee, Benjamin F. Thomas and Joseph B. Whitehead, came to Atlanta and asked Mr. Candler to grant them the rights to bottle Coca-Cola throughout the United States. Although he had allowed Joseph A. Biedenharn of Vicksburg, Mississippi, to begin putting the product in bottles in 1894, Candler was still skeptical of the future of the bottled product. However, he sold Thomas and Whitehead the bottling rights for virtually all of the country for the sum of one dollar. Legend has it he never bothered to collect this token payment. With the substantial assistance of a third Chattanoogan, John T. Lupton, Thomas and Whitehead began to build a network of independent bottlers from coast to coast. The efforts of Candler, Thomas, Whitehead, and Lupton, the growth of sales at the soda fountain, and the ever-expanding bottler system kept Coca-Cola on the move through the first two decades of the 20th century. In 1919, Mr. Candler sold the Coca-Cola Company for $25 million to a group of investors led by Ernest Woodruff. The sale was the forerunner of an event that took place in 1923, an event that would shape the character 
and assure the continued success of Coca-Cola. That was the year when Ernest Woodruff's eldest son, the 32-year-old Robert Winship Woodruff, was elected president of the Coca-Cola Company, although Ernest Woodruff himself questioned the move. Under Robert Woodruff's leadership, Coca-Cola began to move forward with renewed vigor. It was he who recognized the potential in meeting the refreshment needs of the world by expanding the product's limited offshore distribution. Within six years, Coca-Cola was being sold in two dozen countries outside the United States and Canada with strong advertising and distribution like that in Holland, Belgium, and Spain, in Panama, Italy, and England, and in Germany, Mexico, France, and China. By the end of the 1920s, Coca-Cola had become truly international and was moving ahead at a pace that would continue through the years of economic depression and world conflict. At the outset of World War II, Mr. Woodruff had ordered the company to see that every man in uniform gets a bottle of Coca-Cola for five cents, wherever he is and whatever it costs. During the war, five billion bottles of Coke went to servicemen and women from 64 bottling plants that were shipped overseas and set up as close as possible to combat areas. One year after the war's end, Coca-Cola was available in 59 countries. The past four decades have seen dramatic changes in the soft drink industry. New products, new packages, new technology, new consumer lifestyles. But Coca-Cola has continued to stay a step ahead of the changing times.
Looking back over the years, we can see early bottling works replaced by modern production facilities. The foot-powered bottling machines give way to generations of new machinery. Machines that today are capable of filling over 1,500 packages per minute. We see the wooden syrup drum as a distant ancestor of the giant tank truck. The old truck is first in a long parade of delivery vehicles. We see the world-renowned hobble skirt bottle of 1916 as the father of a healthy family of all shapes and sizes. The six-bottle carton of 1924 as the inspiration for an ever-evolving line of convenient multi-packs. The ice-filled tub replaced by the open cooler of 1928 forerunner of improved models to follow. We see variations on the old fountain syrup urn give way to the automatic dispenser of 1933, the forerunner of ever-improving units. The coin-controlled vendor of 1935 as the first of an increasingly sophisticated line of automatic units. Keeping in step with an ever-changing world has always been a major strength of the Coca-Cola system. As consumer lifestyles and tastes have changed, Coca-Cola has changed to meet them. As the nature of the trade has changed from small stores and shops to giant food stores and fast food restaurant chains, Coca-Cola has changed to better serve their needs. As ways of communicating with the public have changed, Coca-Cola has changed the ways to deliver its message of refreshment most effectively. During the last four decades, television has been a powerful force in strengthening the image and widening the acceptance of Coca-Cola with timely, tasteful, and memorable messages in this country and beyond. There are times every day as you work or you play when a pause would be welcome to you. And it's then that you find the bright thought in your mind that only a Coke will do. Fifty million times a day at home at work or on the way there's nothing Nothing, nothing else gives you the bracing sparkle and the bright little lift that's so delightfully yours in ice-cold Coca-Cola. Coke has a distinctive flavor all its own that no one has ever succeeded in matching. No wonder Coca-Cola is the most asked-for soft drink in the world. Fifty million times a day at home, at work, or on the way, there's nothing like the Coca-Cola, nothing like Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. Life is much more fun when you're refreshed. And Coke refreshes you best. It's the refreshingest. Food goes better with, fun goes better with, you go better with Coke. The real life one puts extra fun in you and everything you do. So things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. Right now, why not let an ice-cold Coke make things go better for you? Mmm, cold, crisp, never too sweet, fun, food, and people. All need the spirited taste of ice-cold Coke to be really refreshed. Things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. It's a real thing In the back of your mind What you're hoping to find It's a real thing It's a real thing Coke is the way it should be Coca-Cola What the world wants to see
Mr. Green? Yeah. You need any help? Mm-mm. Want my Coke? No, no. Really, you can have it. Okay. Thanks. That's the way it should be. I like to say. Is it the most refreshing way to make the most of every day? And wherever you go and whatever you do, there's something big waiting for me and you. Coke is it the biggest taste you've ever found? Coke is it the one that never lets you down? Coke is it the most refreshing taste around? Coke is Red, white, and you. You are about to experience something new. A new wave of taste that will stretch your imagination. A taste so smooth, so refreshing, so irresistible. Your only choice will be to catch it. Catch the wave. Coke. Looking back over the road Coca-Cola has traveled, we see a record of success that was built on successfully meeting the human desire for refreshment and the ability to meet this desire first with a single delicious and refreshing soft drink. A drink that has fathered a line of quality brands for every taste and every occasion. In 1886, 13 drinks of Coca-Cola were purchased daily. In 1986, that figure is more than 300 million drinks a day. And that's the figure for Coca-Cola alone. Include the company's other soft drink products, and the daily total exceeds 450 million. Astounding and growing. Today, Coca-Cola is part of the lives of people in more than 155 countries. Now the Coca-Cola system is crossing the threshold that leads into a new century. Certainly the coming decades will see today's theories become realities and will experience realities as yet undreamed of. The Coca-Cola enterprise will anticipate and adapt to the world of the future and continue to grow. The enterprise will grow because whatever the years ahead may hold for ours and succeeding generations, it will remain on the leading edge of marketing practices and technological innovations. It will keep in step with the changes that take place among its customers and consumers everywhere. As in the past, Coca-Cola and our other products will remain ever contemporary, ever young. While new products and new methods of service will be developed and put in place to fulfill the evolving needs of customers and consumers. Change is inevitable. It is welcome and its pace will accelerate but there is one factor that will remain unchanged. It is timeless. It is the simple desire of people everywhere to pause, to refresh. And this is the core of the success of Coca-Cola. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honey bees and snow white turtle doves. I like to teach the world 